when you talk about the vastness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his bounty, what you realize is that sometimes you come across these authentic ahadith and at first you might even be a little suspicious about whether or not they're authentic because the reward that is mentioned is so great for seemingly very simple things. And then you realize that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he talks about these deeds that are otherwise inaccessible to us or these rewards that are otherwise inaccessible to us, the deeds that he does Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are always regular habits that we can adopt in our lives. And who knows how many hajjas and how many rewards we will find on the Day of Judgment ta'ala, if we sincerely undertake those deeds. First and foremost, the sincerity of intention. And you know, sometimes, especially for those that make the intention of Hajj, it doesn't really hit them that, you know, inshallah, you had the niyyah, so bidnillahi ta'ala, uh, because you had the intention, the sincere intention, it counts. But I didn't feel it, right? I didn't get to go to Medina and go to Mecca. I didn't feel the struggle of Hajj. And so it's hard for me to conceive that perhaps I actually would have the reward of Hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to all of us who made the intention for Hajj or Umrah, Allahumma Ameen. And then you look at this particular hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu chose to talk about the people who wanted to go to Tabuk. Now remember, Tabuk was a difficult journey. It was in the heat of the summer and it was a journey that the hypocrites did not want to go on because it just required so much and they made all sorts of excuses. And the Prophet Sallallahu is speaking to those who actually went to Tabu and they actually encountered all of its hardships. And he says, there are people that are not with you, habasahum al marad that they were held back by some sort of sickness or al udur they had some sort of excuse, but they have the same reward as you. So the Prophet Sallallahu is saying that to the people that went under that huge journey, that undertook that huge journey with all of its hardships. And he's saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, there are people that have the same reward, even though they did not struggle the way that you struggled. So the sincerity of intention is important. And it's something that we have to always remind ourselves of, that بالنيات, that actions are but by intentions. It's not just some sort of uh, comfort that the Prophet Sallallahu gives to us when we can't fulfill a deed. It's something that requires work. Like you have to actually work on your intention and make sure that as you intend to do something, that you sincerely intend it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the reward is assured from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, one of the things that we see with the Sahaba is that when they moved to al Medina, for example, they were unable to make it to Mecca and they missed Umrah. And we see the wisdom of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he says that whoever makes wudu in Medina and then he heads out to Masjid Quba, the first masjid in Islam to pray to rak'ahs, that that will equal Umrah, that that will actually equal Umrah. So imagine if you just moved to Medina and you now have that comfort from the Prophet Sallallahu that going out to Quba is like going to Mecca and getting the reward of Umrah. So that's something that we still do today because in the mercy of Allah, though there might be context to these things, they are not restricted in their reward. This is something that is available to the entire Ummah. And so you have one of the most hopeful hadiths, not just about attaining the reward of Hajj, but Hajj with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine if you lived in Medina and everyone came back and you missed out, right? Think about the few people that did not get to go on Hajj with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's being referred to as Hajjatul Wada', the farewell Hajj. There's a chance that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam won't go out again. And so people are really remorseful and regretful that did not go with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's this particular woman, Um Sinan al-Ansariya radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was so sad because she wanted to go on Hajj with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but she was unable to. So she goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she complains to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about her situation that, Ya Rasulullah, I missed Hajj with you. So this is after the Hajj. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, well, what stopped you from doing Hajj with us, O Um Sinan? And she said, my husband only has two camels. He used one for himself to go out with Hajj for you. And the other camel is for irrigating our land. So I had no way to actually go out with Hajj or for Hajj with you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have given her a specific answer to her situation. He could have said to her, for example, that, you know, you had the sincere intention. So inshallah, it counts. And that would have been true to everything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already said about so many other things. But instead, a gift to the entire Ummah 
the Prophet Sallallahu says to her, if you can go out in Umrah in Ramadan, فَإِنَّ عُمْرَةً فِي رَمَضَان تَقْضِي حَجَّةً مَعِي If you do Umrah in Ramadan, it is equal to doing Hajj with me. Notice the Prophet Sallallahu did not tell her to go to Hajj next year because the Prophet Sallallahu knew that he would not be around for Hajj next year. But he gave a gift to the Ummah. May Allah reward Umm Sinan for asking the Prophet ﷺ that question because when you see the Haram in normal circumstances full in the time of Ramadan and the people flocking from all over the world, know that that is the reward of Hajj with the Prophet ﷺ. Now you have all of these various deeds and this is something that I want to end this series with because these are things that are accessible to all of us ta'ala, and they all equal Hajj. And these are all authentic narrations that I'm going to share with you. What are the deeds that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned? Equal Hajj. Number one, the most famous and the most common, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays in jama'ah, whoever prays in congregation and remembers Allah from Fajr, so prays Fajr in congregation and remembers Allah until sunrise. So they make dua or they do dhikr, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the legislated ways. And then they pray two rak'ahs after sunrise, Salat al duha The Prophet Sallallahu said that that person has the reward of Hajj, Tama, 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 complete, complete, complete. The reward of Hajj and Umrah, complete, complete, complete. So that's something that you can do on a regular basis. You could pray Fajr and you could stay until sunrise. And that is the reward of Hajj and Umrah. And that's something that the Prophet Sallallahu mentions authentically. Then there are other narrations, all of them authentic. One of them, the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَنْ مَشَى إِلَىٰ صَلَاةٍ مَكْتُوبَةٍ فِي الْجَمَاعَةٍ Whoever walks to one of the obligatory prayers to pray in congregation. فَهِيَ كَحَجَّةٍ Then that is the reward of Hajj. وَمَنْ مَشَى إِلَىٰ صَلَاةٍ تَطَوَّعٍ And whoever walks to pray a voluntary prayer in the masjid, then that is Umrah. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ specified Salat al-Duha. So if a person one day decides that they want to go to Salat al-Duha or they want to go pray two rak'ahs in the masjid, Salat al-Duha or a voluntary prayer, then that is the reward of Umrah. And when a person walks to the mandatory Salat, then the Prophet ﷺ says, that is like a Hajj, complete, complete, complete. Well, what about the other things? And notice they all surround the masjid here, right? The Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic hadith, مَنْ غَدَى إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمَ خَيْرًا أَوْ يُعَلِّمَ Whoever goes out to the masjid and what they want, the only thing that they want is to learn something good or teach something good. So both the student and the teacher, when there's a halaqa, and you go out to the masjid, to one of those circles of remembrance, and think about this, by the way, in the age of everything being virtual now, especially post COVID, right? When things open up and you actually have the opportunity to go and listen to something in person, attend a class live. The Prophet wasallam said, Kana lahu ka ajri hajj, that that person has the reward of a person who went out for hajj, tama. And he said, all together, complete, complete, complete. Why does the Prophet wasallam keep saying tama? Because you might be thinking to yourself, Come on, Ya Rasulullah. Really, the entire Hajj, the Prophet ﷺ is saying the reward of Hajj, complete, complete, complete. So these are things, subhanAllah, that surround the masjid that a person could do on a regular basis. Praying Salat al-Fajr and staying until Salat al-Duha. Going to the obligatory prayer or going to pray a voluntary prayer, specifically perhaps Salat al-Duha when they have the opportunity to do so. Or a person going to the masjid to learn or to teach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that reward accessible to all of us. Allahumma ameen. And then there's one more narration that I want to share with you in this regard, also an authentic narration from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a powerful narration. He says that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ata rajul nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal, inni ashtahi al-jihad. He said that I want to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I desire to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to struggle in the path of Allah. Wa inni la aqdiru alayhi, but I don't have the means to do so. So I can't go out in Tabuk, I can't go out in Hunayn. Ya Rasulullah, I'm unable to do so. What was the answer of the Prophet ﷺ? He said, هَلْ بَقِيَ أَحَدٌ مِنْ وَالِدَيْكَ Are either of your two parents still alive? قَالَ أُمِّي He said, my mother. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَبْلِ اللَّهَ عُذْرًا فِي بِرِّهَا The Prophet ﷺ said, then show your closeness to Allah, come close to Allah 
with your intention. Strive and struggle by obeying her, by showing her goodness, by giving her good companionship, by serving her. And the Prophet Sallallahu and of course we know that when it comes to jihad, this is the famous narration where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sent the young man back and he said, فَفِيهِ مَا فَجَاهِدْ Then strive in your parents, right? Strive in their favor that go back to your mother, heaven is under her feet. But here in this particular narration, which is an authentic narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا فَعَلْتَ ذَلِكَ That if you do what I just told you. If you honor your mother, the Prophet said, فَأَنْتَ حَاجْ وَمُعْتَمَرْ You are a person who is amongst those who do hajj and mu'tamar. You are one of those who has done umrah وَمُجَاهِدْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So SubhanAllah, if one of your parents is alive, honoring your parent is like jihad and hajj and umrah all together. And this is an authentic narration from the Prophet SubhanAllah, we find this throughout this entire series and throughout everything that the Prophet Sallallahu was doing in Hajj. Rasulullah Sallallahu did not want to restrict our Islam to a single gathering, but rather to transform our entire lives. And that's something that we take even from the ultimate gathering that happened in this world with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah resurrect us in the ultimate gathering in the hereafter in his companionship Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and allow us to be his neighbors in Jannat al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa